Hey friends, I'm Pastor Joe and I have your word for the day. As we've been looking at Nehemiah, we're talking about rebuilding and re, uh, renewing our lives. Tomorrow, May 15th, Pastor Chad and I are inviting all those who are able to to set aside six hours for fasting, confession, mourning, and prayer to invite God to prepare our hearts for the next None of us know what this, uh, the church is going to look like in the post-COVID-19 world, but we still know there are people who need to experience the life-changing love of God through the, through the forgiveness of sins. We still know there is a great responsibility for the church to be the church, to care for one another, to use our spiritual gifts to build up the kingdom of God, to share the love of Jesus in practical ways to our community. See, every person can make a difference as we rebuild. Every family can make a difference as we rebuild. You can make a difference and an impact in God's kingdom today. Now, to the Israelites, Nehemiah's challenge to rebuild the wall was not anything they hadn't thought about doing before. In fact, they had tried to rebuild the wall before and they had failed. They were challenged by Nehemiah to do something they had already failed at. They had been unsuccessful at it. But this time it was different for Jerusalem. They knew that God desired for the wall to be rebuilt. They knew that the Israelites uh, were for the wall. They knew that Nehemiah was for the wall. Even the king Artaxerxes was for the wall and had Nehemiah had given the, uh, Nehemiah the paperwork to prove it. The stones were heavy, the labor was intense, the wall was wide and high, but the people were working together. Now, in Nehemiah chapter 3, Nehemiah assigned groups of people to various places along the wall to rebuild. Chapter 3 is filled with names that are difficult to pronounce, but if you can manage reading it, a pattern begins to emerge. For instance, in Nehemiah chapter 3, verses 3 and 4, we read this. The fish gate was built by the sons of Hasana. They laid the beams, set up its doors, and installed its bolts and bars. Merimoth, son of Uriah, and grandson of Havkaz repaired the next section of wall. Now, here's the pattern. We see a family or a group's name. Then we see what they worked on. We see who was beside them. Leaders of districts, politicians, priests, fathers working al alongside their daughters, perfume makers, carpenters, residents of cities from outside of Jeru Jerusalem came to help. Why? Because they caught the vision. It was time to rebuild. Together, as one united group, they set aside their differences and they pulled together as one family of God's people. Everyone did their part including the ones responsible to rebuild the dung gate. In verse 14, we read that uh, Malkijah rebuilt the dung gate. It was a crappy job, but somebody had to do it. There are elements of rebuilding that are not glamorous. If you had the choice to rebuild the temple gate or rebuild the dung gate, which would you choose? Well, probably the temple. You have a personal responsibility to rebuild the areas of the church that God is calling you to. And not just the areas of the church, but areas of your own personal lives. See, God could have miraculously just rebuilt the walls. God could have just re... re uh, uh, re uh, um, <laughs> Sorry, God could have just miraculously rebuilt anything he wanted to. But God always chooses to use you and me. So as you focus on rebuilding our lives and rebuilding our community and rebuilding our church, I want to talk about what your role is in rebuilding the church. 
Maybe it's rebuilding our first impressions team. And maybe it's rebuilding our kids' ministry, our student ministry. Maybe it's rebuilding to be part of our tech team. Uh, maybe it's part of our worship team. Maybe, maybe you're supposed to jump in and help build our online streaming service for the weekend. Maybe you're supposed to jump in and serve at our Parker campus. See, not all of the responsibilities are glamorous within the church but they are all equally important. And we are the people of God and we must stand shoulder to shoulder with one another and work together to see the ministries of Calvary leading people to life change. So what is your role? I don't know. But join us tomorrow together from 6 a.m. to noon in a spirit of prayer, mourning, confessing, and inviting God to move in our next. God bless, and I will see you then.